In this video, let's go through all the HivePress settings in the HivePress settings section to make sure that the website is set up and functions according to the requirements. Let's start with the listing step. Here, you can choose a page that displays all the listings. At the moment I'll leave it empty, but later in this course I'll show you how to add pages and we'll come back to this option. If this option is checked, then the listings page will display categories instead of listings until some specific category is selected. With these three options, you can set up the number of regular, featured and related listings displayed per page. Also, note that if something is not clear, you can hover over the question icon for an extra description. Additionally, you can check our docs or ask a question on the HivePress community forum. For example, thanks to this clue, we know that this option allows us to generate listing titles based on custom listing fields automatically. Here, you can enable zoom in the listing image gallery. In the search section, you can select which default fields you want to show in the listing search form. As you can see, we can choose keywords and categories. In the submission section, you can adjust the listing submission settings. For example, you can link custom terms of use page to require users to accept them before adding a new listing. You can uncheck this option if for some reason you want to hide the front-end listing submission form. In that case, users won't be able to add listings and only the website owner will be able to do that. Note that the listing moderation is enabled by default, so the site admins will have to approve every listing manually before it appears on the front end. Uncheck this option if you want to publish listings automatically without approving them first. This one allows users to report listings for any reason that violates your website terms. If you want listings to be published for a limited time, in this section you can set their expiration period by setting the number of days after which a listing expires. Also, here you can set the number of days after which an expired listing is deleted permanently. Here is the selling section. Here you can enable pricing tiers. It will allow freelancers to set several price options for their services that will be displayed as radio buttons, and customers will be able to choose one of the prices. Here you can enable price extras, simply saying it's like price add-ons. For example, freelancers who offer voice-over services can add price extras like narration proofreading for an additional fee. Also, you can allow freelancers to require select price extras. It means that customers won't be able to purchase a service without choosing at least one or several extras. Quantity. If you want, you can enable this feature. In that case, freelancers will be able to set the number of services they can provide per day. Finally, you can allow file attachments. It may be a handy feature if a result of the provided service should include some files like photo, receipt, plan or whatever. In that case, freelancers will be able to attach files as a result of the order. Also, this feature is necessary if you are building a marketplace of digital assets, for example. Let's move to the next step. Within this tab, you can set up the reviews functionality. Using this option, you can allow users to leave multiple reviews per listing, and with this one, you can disable moderation if you want to allow publishing reviews without checking them first. By checking this option, you can allow freelancers to reply to reviews left by users. The next is the Vendors tab. In the Display section, you can define whether you want to display profiles of freelancers on the front end at all. If so, then similarly to listings, you can select a page that displays all vendors and set the number of vendors per page. Display name. This defines how the freelancer's name will be displayed. By default, it's always a username. However, if you create some vendor attributes, you'll also be able to set them here to synchronize the vendor name with, for example, a company name, etc. In the search section, you can select which default fields you want to show in the vendor search form. In the registration section, 
you can allow direct registration. As I mentioned before, by default, to become a vendor a user has to add at least one listing. But if you enable this option, then users will be able to register as vendors without submitting listings at all. Within these fields, you can set the commission rate. In other words, set a certain percentage that will be charged on every successful deal. I'll set 10%. Additionally, you can set a fixed fee for every purchase. Please note that you can use either a commission or a fixed fee or even both at the same time. For example, you can set $2. And freelancers will be charged 10% and $2 for every successful sale. With this option, you can include or not include taxes in the freelancer's balance. Once you set the commission rate, click on the Save Changes button. Please note that in the Vendors section, it's also possible to set a custom commission rate and fee for each freelancer. I'll show you. Simply go to the Vendors section, select any freelancer, and here you can set a custom commission rate and a custom commission fee. That's all for vendors. Now let's move to the Users tab. In the Display Name field, you can set how usernames are displayed on the front end. You can leave it as it is, simply the first name, or if your users agree to share their full names, you can select the full name option instead. A more private option is displaying the first name and the first letter of the last name. In the Registration section, you can enable or disable user registration. This depends on your website niche, but in most cases it's better to allow website visitors to register because the user account is required for sending messages, adding listing to favorites, and of course, purchasing services. If you select a registration terms page here, users will have to tick a checkbox with a link to this page in the registration form before registering an account. You can enable this option if you want to generate a username from the email address automatically instead of showing a separate username field in the registration form. I recommend enabling email verification to ensure every email on your website is authentic. Also, it's really important to restrict access to the WordPress backend for regular users to prevent any potential security issues. So, let's move on! In the Sending section, you can enable attachments to allow users to send attachments via messages and here you can select the file types that can be attached. If you enable monitoring, then you and your website administrators will be able to monitor all the conversations on your freelance marketplace. Here you can set a list of blocked keywords. This means that all the messages containing these keywords will be blocked. In the storage section, you can enable or disable storing messages in the database. When disabled, this option basically sends all the messages via email instead of storing and displaying them on the site. If this option is enabled, you can set the number of days to store messages on the site before they are deleted automatically. It can improve the performance of your website since there is no need to keep all the conversations for a long time, and with this option, all the old conversations will be deleted. Alright, now let's move to the Requests tab. With HivePress, you can allow customers to post custom requests, indicating the desired budget, while freelancers can bid on requests and make offers. Here, you can choose a page where all the requests will be displayed, set how many requests you want to display per page, and allow generating request titles based on custom fields automatically. By default, customers can post public requests, and any freelancer can make an offer. But if you check this option, clients will be able to make personal requests to freelancers of their choice, and only those freelancers will see such requests. You can uncheck this option if you don't want to check and approve each new request manually. In that case, all the new requests will be published immediately. You can enable this feature if you want to make sure that freelancers won't miss any new request. An automatic email will be sent to freelancers each time someone posts a request. Finally, 
Set an expiration period that will define how many days a request can be displayed on your website and then will be deleted. Let's move on to the Offers tab. Firstly, you can select who can view the submitted offers – all users, only registered users, or the request author. By default, a freelancer can make only one offer per request, but if you enable this feature, freelancers will be able to add multiple offers with different prices per request. For example, if there is a request for a voice cover, in the first offer a professional can suggest a voice over for $50, then they can make another offer and suggest a voice over including proofreading for $70. If you want to review all the offers before they are published, enable moderation to approve each offer manually. Leave this option enabled if you want to allow freelancers to bid on requests. Finally, you can allow freelancers to add attachments to their offers. For example, they can add their portfolios or presentations, etc. After clicking on the Save Changes button, go to the Orders section. As I mentioned before, each time a customer purchases a service or accepts an offer, a new order is created, and once the order is paid, freelancers can provide the service. Here, you can restrict messages to customers. In that case, customers will be able to contact freelancers only after making a payment. If this feature is enabled, only customers that purchase a service will be able to leave reviews. If you enable this option, freelancers will be able to add some custom fields to require some order details and customers will have to fill them out. For example, if it's a translation service, a freelancer may need to clarify what dialect should be used in translation. By default, all the customer's contact details are hidden from freelancers. But if you enable this feature, freelancers will have access to customer's contact details. I do not recommend enabling it if you want to prevent marketplace leakage, meaning that you should prevent any possibility of customers getting in touch with freelancers by passing your platform. Enable this feature if you want to require freelancers to mark their orders as delivered when they finish. Also, you can set how many revisions of an order a customer can request. If you enable completion, Customers will have to mark orders as completed manually before the freelancer receives the funds. Also, in case some customers forget to mark the order as completed, you can set some auto-completion period here. Please note that the auto-completion period starts from the moment when the freelancer marks the order as delivered. You can enable refunds if you want to allow freelancers to make refunds to customers. Also, I recommend checking the disputes option. It allows users to notify the platform admins if there is something wrong with the order. Alright, let's move on. Payouts. Currently there are three modes – Manual, Direct and Stripe Connect. With Manual Payouts you can use any payment method of your choice and ask details for it to process payout requests manually, depending on your schedule. With Stripe Connect Payouts are triggered automatically when the order is marked as completed. Keep in mind that for this mode you'll have to add the Stripe Connect API credentials in the Integrations tab. With direct payouts only the commission fee is paid. The rest can be paid in person or directly, depending on how users and vendors communicate. With direct mode you basically get rid of payouts. If you are going to use the manual mode, you can enable this feature to allow freelancers to request payouts of their earnings. Also, you can set a minimum payout amount. In that case, freelancers will have to reach this balance before they can request a payout. In the case at hand, I'll set $100. Ok, now let's check the integrations tab that contains all the third-party integration settings like reCAPTCHA. Also, if you purchased any of the premium HivePress themes or extensions, here you can set your license key in the HivePress Store section to enable automatic updates. Let's enable reCAPTCHA to protect the frontend forms from spam bots. To do this, it's necessary to sign up for an API key pair for this site. Let's go to the Google reCAPTCHA service page. I'll leave the link to this page in the video description. Now, 
I'll briefly fill in all the fields. After filling in the site details, simply copy both keys, go to your website and paste them into the corresponding fields. Then, select the forms you want to protect with the CAPTCHA. In this case, I'll choose the user registration form to prevent the spam bus from registering. That's it! We have just finished setting up HivePress. Now, let's move to the next video, where I'll show you how to list a new service.